So in Hans Andersen's fairy tale, The Snow Queen, the story starts with a mirror that's magic. And when you look into it, you can only see the ugly, boring, and cruel things in the world. It was made by the evilest demon in the whole of history, and he thought it was hilarious. When you looked into it, if you had a little pimple on your chin, you'd see reflected a horrible, disfiguring pustule. If you looked into it at reflection of children playing, you'd see only how cruel they were being to each other. And the demon showed this mirror to people, but it wasn't enough for him. He decided to take it up to heaven to show God and his angels. And so he started to fly upwards. And as he did, he noticed the mirror began to tremble. And then it exploded into a hundred thousand tiny pieces. And this was the worst thing that could have possibly happened because the pieces rained down on the earth. And sometimes someone would get a piece of that mirror in their eye and then they could only see the ugly, boring, and cruel things in the world. And sometimes someone would get a piece of that mirror in their heart, and then their heart would freeze into a block of ice. So, I love that story. It might be my favorite, because I feel that all of us have at some time felt like we've got a bit of that horrible mirror in our eye. So, I'm a professional storyteller, and I draw my repertoire from folk tales, myths, and legends from all around the world, all different cultures and traditions. And I thought, when I was getting ready for this talk, if I looked at all the different stories from all the different traditions, the, the popular ones, the ones that have been told and retold, and see what they have in common, I might find out something about what we, as human beings, have in common. And so I had a look, and I found that from Jack and the Beanstalk to the Aboriginal Dreamtime stories, from the Greek gods to Harry Potter, stories that we tell and love are underpinned with magic. And so, this talk is about magic. So, I don't mean I'm going to show you how to make a love potion, or cut a woman in half, or pick a card. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that indefinable, intangible sense of wonder and expectation which makes you feel as if you're living in an enchanted world. I think everybody has felt it at some time or another in their lives, but for a lot of people, it's something that's associated with childhood. Stories aren't just for children, and nor is magic. Magic can be powerful and transformative, and it can build bridges. Let me give you an example. So, back in the 1990s, I used to share a flat in the West End of London with a club promoter, and at night, he was always out clubbing. So anyway, it was August, and it was really hot, and I was trying to sleep, and he was out. I had all the windows open, couldn't sleep, and I could hear someone outside on the street shouting up to him, because our doorbell didn't work. And she was making a really loud noise, and I couldn't sleep, and I stuck my head out, and I called down, he's gone out. And she went, 
Oh, thank God. Thank God someone's here. Please, please, can I come up and just, just wait for him? I won't be any trouble. And I thought, she seems all right. She can just come up and wait in his room. He wouldn't mind. I know, I know he wouldn't mind. So um, I went down, let her in. She followed me up the stairs. But instead of going into his room and waiting for him, she came into my room and she threw herself down on my bed. And by the light of our room, I could see that, like a lot of his friends, she was quite glamorous. She had a lot of dyed hair, false eyelashes, heavy makeup. And she looked funny as well and kind of strong. She was wearing an Elvis Presley 1970s style jumpsuit with flares and flames up the side. And I said, uh, I uh, like your jumpsuit. And she said, oh, yeah, this, yeah, it's uh, vintage. And then uh, she said, thank you so much for letting me come in and wait. I just needed to be with somebody so bad. I've had the worst day of my life. And I don't even know why. Nothing's even happened. And I just liked her straight away. And I said, oh, well, what, uh, what was it? She said, well, normally, she said, I'm in a band. But to make money, I dance in the nightclub. So it's 12 hours a day. You know, it's OK. I don't mind it, normally. But today, she said, it was so hot in there. I couldn't breathe. And I started to think, and my mind started going round and round. And suddenly, I started to feel like I'd died and gone to hell. And all the men were like demons. And I kept telling myself, when I got out, it would be all right, and I'd feel better. But I'm out, and I don't feel any better. And I thought, I felt sorry for her, and I thought, it's because it's so hot. It's, I'm so hot and uncomfortable. And I wanted to help her. And then just suddenly, this completely surreal, probably because I was sleep deprived, this totally surreal idea came into my head. And I said, uh, do you like swimming? Uh-huh, she said. I said, do you want to come swimming with me right now? Sure, she said. So, middle of the night, we went down, never met her before, got in my car and drove to Hampstead Heath, which is, if you don't know it, amazingly, a beautiful forest with a lake and everything in the middle of London. So anyway, we got there, pitch dark, of course, forest, no lights or anything. And um, we got out of the car, leading her through, cobwebs breaking over our face, sound of the animals, birds. She was giggling. And then we came out to this hillside. And the sky was black, and the moon was white. And the hill was totally white, with long, dry, August grass. It was like being inside a negative. And we came to all the trees where this, this lake was, and the lake had such presence. It was like a living thing, shiny and black. And I said, uh, look, it's really cold, I said, and uh, it can be deep. So. But she had just pulled off her clothes and dived in, head first. And then, she didn't come up. And I was starting to get really worried before she suddenly stuck her head up in the middle and she shook her head and all the droplets fell off. And she looked like a mermaid. And I got in the pond as well, we were swimming around. And she was telling me about her childhood in Canada, riding horses bareback and swimming in the rivers. She was so different. And after that, I was different. I didn't stay in touch with her. I hear she remembered it. Obviously, I remembered it, telling you about it. 
It was like having a piece of that awful mirror washed out of my eye, and it changed the way forever that I relate to the city and I relate to strangers. And so I thought I'd end this little talk with some ideas about how you can bring magic into your own life if you feel inspired to. So I do storytelling events for adults, and I always try and make them magical. And these are things that work for me, but you'll have to find things that work for you, really. The thing, the first thing is place. So like a magical forest in the middle of London is really good, but anywhere that's beautiful and got a lot of history and is deserted. So if there's no one, or if you came here really late at night, <laughs> um, <laughs> and then there's time of day. So middle of the night, which we did, was brilliant, or dawn when the day is just being born, even if it's grey, or when the sun has gone down but the sky is still light. Cinematographers call that magic hour. Great time. And then the other one is who you're with. So I don't want to be too prescriptive, but if there's a person who you know who keeps following you around, talking about house prices and school places, maybe not bring them. Um, <laughs> maybe go by yourself and see who you meet. Meeting people is all part of it. So that's just some tips for you, anyway. But、um, you'll find your own way, I'm sure. There's only one thing that I think is really important. Please believe, because it is real. We do live in an ugly, boring, and cruel world, but it's. Bursting with wonder and beauty, and as Roald Dahl wrote, those who do not believe in magic will never find it. Thank you very much. <laughs>